done a massive Twitter campaign in the last five minutes. <laughs> Free stroke waffles. So if anybody came here just for the stroke waffles, they had to come all the way down. <laughs>
a lot of data. The question is really, how do I find it? Like, where is it? And because of our distributed nature of the entire movement, we tend to put data sets in many different places, different sites, different formats, and it makes it just very hard to find. Let me just share some details. So for example, not, I'm sure not everybody is aware that on datahub.io, um, Dario actually started this, we publish data sets. And they are available. And they are pretty cool data sets. They are data sets about uh, the fundraiser, about the uh, AFP uh, project, um, the Kaggle competition we ran two years ago. So there's a lot of data available on this particular place. Currently 70 data sets. And I think this is one of those things that actually we do have data. And few people might know about it. This is one. So another one is that the analytics team has been working on a tool called LIMP. And LIMP is this um, um, visualization network where non-developers can make their own charts without having to write a complex JavaScript code. And actually, every single chart always contains the link to the data that is being visualized. Right? So you, you, you can take a screenshot of the, of the picture and then use that. You can also just see raw data click on the link and get the CSV or the TSV or whatever it is, and use it yourself. Few people know this. And we've seen LIMP growing slowly in the last couple of months. More people are starting to use it. So there will be more data sets becoming available through LIMP. And this is actually going to get even bigger as we just recently made a prototype where it's possible to actually embed a LIMP chart in a, in a, in a wiki. Right, so this, this is a prototype, you see some things are missing here. Um, so when this becomes available to actually for people to embed the limb charts in the wiki, we expect much more data to be available. But then the question comes, like, how do we make sure people can still find this data? So for example, I was actually surprised myself. So we have currently um, eight different instances of limb. So the E2 team has one, the E3 team has one, the model team has one. Got a couple for ourselves. In total, we have 168 dashboards, and I was already like shocked by that number. Like, that we, I didn't realize we had that many. I thought they had like maybe like a handful, like 10 or something. There are like 2,800 CSV files, different CSV files being displayed, and I'm sure nobody knew this, and I'm sure nobody could find this data, which is like a real problem, right? And we already had more than 4,000 charts using them. Another example, and I'm sure most of you actually do know this site, it's called stats.wikimedia.org. And that's like one of the, I would say, our core entry points um, for, for data and Wikimedia. And here, I also was kind of shocked like how much data we actually publish there. I, I, I just kind of didn't count by extension. So the TSVs, the CSVs, so the CSVs are like 9,000 different parts. But then, <coughs> The map reduce output, this is our new Hadoop based cluster, already generated more than 50,000 data sets. And then the HTML, and so back all the way to 2001, there are more than 90,000 HTML files containing raw data. So this is already kind of shocking to me that we have a lot of data. It's just hard to find, and once you find found it, it's probably even harder to uh, process, particularly because there's just, we aren't very uh, consistent in actually publishing metadata about it, uh, telling you how to use it, telling you what it means. But these are all kinds of challenges we have. So Jonathan, to come back to your question, like what are the tools out there? So for example, the tools out there are right now are limp. The tools out there are Sketch and um, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with sketch.graph.se, which is the, the site that's yeah and race and, and make some noise about it if you are frustrated with that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right, it's, it's our, it's, it's a community, it's an awesome project. Uh, we are responsible for publishing the data, the, the raw page view count, we do it on an hourly basis. And uh, this, whole, this community member, Henrik, runs the site to actually have a nice uh, uh, chart around and you can actually download the raw data. Um, so I think discoverability. Darren and I, we both, both care a lot about this, and we would really like to hear your ideas or suggestions about how we can improve this. What can we do 
to make it easier to find data. And the second question that I think we both care about is suppose you have this data set, and suppose you have run your analysis. And how do we codify what we get? How do we make understandable for other people what are the steps involved to run an analysis? What were the assumptions that we made running the analysis? What were the data transformations we did? Clean up the data, to normalize variables, to standardize variables, all those, like, let's say, more like quantitative steps that you need to take before you actually run an analysis. It's very hard to actually solve this problem. And there have been some really awesome developments in the wider scientific community to address the issue. Some of you might have, been, uh, might have known about uh, IPython and Notebook, which allows you to kind of really track your analysis and you can actually share it with other people and they can rerun your analysis. And I think it's an awesome idea. And we need to, I think, we need to think about similar approaches or maybe even use IPython. So, as you know, some of you might know, every month we have this metrics meeting where we present a dashboard that shows some key performance indicators or health indicators of the community, right? We show the number of unique visitors to the site, we show the number of active editors, we show a bunch of these critical measures that indicate our success. These are like recurring requests, right? Every month we need to run these reports, every month we need to show the data. And this is work I'm convinced that you should automate as much as possible. You should not spend or dedicate endless time to these kind of reporting tasks because they are recurring, right? We can, in a, something is recurring, we can easily automate. And we should really have analysts, particularly in the foundation, work on data analysis, on doing stuff that is, you cannot automate, on digging to the data, bringing the business domain knowledge to the data set to answer real questions instead of having to gobble up the job. They easy to automate, um, and by easy to automate, you can guarantee the quality of service. We should, we should really focus our limited data, our limited analysts, uh, firstly on more important things. And the final thing, we should make self-serve, right? As I mentioned, the team is right now very small, probably will stay small for a while. So we should not become your bottleneck if you want to interact with the data. So most of you might be familiar with what's called ETL, it's called extraction, transformation, <coughs> loading, and it's kind of a, like a 1980s concept of how to process data into a warehouse. I'm, I like more of the AP square two, I know, acquired uh, data, process data, and process data kind of paradigm, where it's much more about continuous flow of data. We don't have a single owner, like right we as the analytics team don't own the data, I think we together own the data, we find a bit more responsibility in maintaining the quality of service and maintaining that the data is available. But the data is shared, there's no single ownership. And we should make it possible, if you, if you visualize this as a, a stream of data, I mean, multiple people can just, can just hook in and query the data and get it when they need it. And so this is what I think you should do with the ongoing metrics that we are reporting in the, in the report card, right? Um, if we uh, adopt this kind of view, then we become um, we can automate stuff. But this, I like the way to think about the ETL. <coughs> so currently, this is not really the case, right? So uh, we have different places where we report our metrics, right? We have <coughs> dashboards, like the report card with wikis, even at websites. And as an end user, you might know, you might not know where it is. And even if you have found it, you might still have questions around how it actually was generated. It doesn't come with a built-in indication for you. But that's like one judge. Like the second judge then is actually, so suppose I care about the actual <coughs> metric. Although it sounds like on a, on a high level, like a simple metric, when you actually start calculating it, there are like a lot of questions or assumptions baked into the definition that are not easy to understand. So you have to, on one hand you have the definition of the metric and on the other hand you have the implementation. And we always assume that these two things are 
aligned. But this might be sometimes a naive assumption. Um, and it's very hard to verify, right? We have this definition, but how are we sure that the actual implementation matches the definition? There's always the risk of the practice gap between those two. It's a big issue, right? And so where is this uh, right now located? The implementation details, well, they are located sometimes in a wiki. We actually write it down sometimes. But often, it's in analyst mind, which makes it like test, and makes it like very hard for people to access because I can't access the area of mind uh, all the time, unfortunately. And often it's also um, in source code. And then I think the burden is too high to expect people to read Perl or Python and go through long source code files to look for the exact implementation and figure out what, what, how, it's, how it's happening. So these are issues, I think. Finally, if you want to actually run a metric, you need some input, right? And the input, as I mentioned before, is a, there we have many different files, many different locations. Again, you have MySQL, you have HTTPS, which is the new cluster. You have on the regular files, you have to the Git. All these places. Not very, very little times, we actually accompany the data with metadata. So, um, what kind of data point is it? What kind of um, other information? How was it created? Who was, who was the creator of the data? All this information is often missing at least in the sense that it's not explicitly being published. And it makes it very hard for you as a consumer to actually dig into the data and ask questions. Like, you've got a data set, but who are you going to call if you have a question? And actually, in general, if you want to have a question, always come to analytics.media on IRC. We have this little hangout uh, IRC room and happy to answer questions. But these are pretty significant challenges to kind of, to kind of solve. And this is, again, uh, thank you um, if you really want to free up the analysts and focus them on, on real anal analysis stuff, then we have some certain desirable qualities in our workflows that we should try to achieve. Um, obviously, human discoverable output is very important that humans can find. But I think more and more we also want to go to a machine discoverable output so that other machines can just read the data, right? APIs kind of stuff. Um, it's all going to be automated, uh, repeatable, and like doing it once is nice, but that's kind of ad hoc. -y. We want to make sure we can repeat it over and over and over again. We want to make sure like it's monitorable, so we can actually guarantee that this metric will be published every month and when it fails, we get alerts so you don't have to yell at us that we broke something and we didn't notice it. That happens right now still with the records collector that sometimes it breaks and we don't notice it and it's kind of hard. So I think it's definitely our um, uh, our responsibility. And finally, reproducible differs from repeatable. Repeatable means that you are able to do it multiple times yourself. Reproducible means that somebody else is able to repeat your analysis. It's like a, it's kind of a holy grail. If you want if you're able to do that, then you no longer have single point of failure. It means that you have really done a good job in documenting your analysis. Finally, I think this is probably the one that I've heard the most. Daniel, Page your API. And why don't you have one? And I think this also goes back to Stuart's question, like what is a low hanging fruit? I think this could be potentially low hanging fruit if you have some death jobs. Are you volunteering? <laughs> um, I'm unable to, uh, to make code for this, but I'll just give 50 bucks to anyone doing so. Git it. You know, git it. Mm -hmm. you, you know, git it. Yeah. You can start a project and people can donate money to it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like, we are almost there, right? So we, have, we already published hourly page view counts for all the projects and also uh, all, the, all the page views. It's just not easily vertical, right? We have the stuff that the CSE site that is doing an amazing job, but it's hard to like, query in a, in, a, in a large scale way. And so I think I've heard this many, many times. Uh, I'm very bummed about that we don't have one. I really would like to have one, but it's definitely one of those projects that if somebody wants to 
volunteer or want to step up or help us, then please, please, please reach out to me. Um, oh, so now, I mean, if you haven't seen this, I'm sure you have. This is one of the charts that this is for Asia. It just shows you the number of patients for Asia article in the last, uh, I believe it's 90 days. You can also go much. No, it's actually, oh, sorry, this is here. Oh, this is here. Um, yeah, and it, it, it is in decent form available, um, but yeah, there's no full RESTful API behind it. The other source for page view stuff is this is uh, stats that drop those we created at org. A lot of data is there. Like, it's really, it's really dense, right? There's, there's just tons and tons of data. I think there are two challenges, particularly with this site, is that it's so dense that it's really hard actually to make sure to find what you're looking for. And the second thing is, is the data is not being offered in a raw format. And actually, um, I tried to scrape it myself the other day, uh, and I failed miserably because the HTML mark is also kind of, let's say, wonky sometimes. So it's actually non trivial to write a simple HTML script just to get data out. So I think this is like one of those things that, yeah, we need to make it easier to, re to make this data available to reuse. So those are, let me go back to that. So those are, I think, three challenges that Dario and I we, we, we think about. Um, I hope that I quickly touched upon some of the questions. Um, have some other questions? Yeah, we have several questions. Awesome. Um, so we have a couple of questions about Wikidata. Uh, they're more related to anything Wiki, Wikidata, working with external organization. I guess it's also a great opportunity to clarify that data from Wikimedia, uh, so reuse of data produced from our projects, and editing Wikidata or participating in Wikidata are two fairly different um, areas. So I have my own interest in Wikidata, but I'm not a, at all an expert uh, of, of Wikidata. So for those, of you, either. for those of you who are interested in knowing how, you know, complex problems of how to engage with external uh, authorities for Wikidata, how that would work, uh, the Wikidata book would be way more relevant than, than we are to ask the question. Uh, so we have a couple of questions on, on, on Wikidata. Um, there was a student question about the low hanging fruit. Uh, well, I'd like to hear from others who be, might be familiar with our data sources and our, uh, our tools. If there are other areas other than page views that uh, could produce immediately uh, some, some value for the community. And I have one, and I wanted to give you like my pitch. Um, so I think that on top of page views, um, I guess the second most frequent. Sure. Yeah. So on top of page views, the I would say the second most frequent request that I get internally is some kind of report for uh, edit activity. So select a project. Um, you know, give me the uh, the monthly average of bot edits uh, over the last year on the main namespace for the French week. That's an example, right? And in fact, there's a tool out there, I don't know if you guys have seen it, um, it's called uh, um, the Wikipedia dashboard by a company called uh, Metamarkets. And what they do is that they monitor the recent changes live stream and they make this tool, which unfortunately is not accessible, they shut down uh, the, the sign up page recently, so I can show you which works with my, with my login. But basically, it's a self-serving tool where you can perform these queries and uh, get out to the data you need about, a, in, in a very granular way. So you can, for example, drill down to individual users. And you can basically pull the data about users or categories of users. There's even like geolookup information for anonymous uh, IP. So it's very powerful. It's based on our data. I think that on top of page views, this would be like an extremely powerful tool for, for our community and for, for researchers. Uh, but if you have other ideas about uh, what you think would be like a, a low-hanging fruit, I'd like to hear them. Something that would be interesting for Wiki projects would be uh, like you have a sign-up page uh, of people who are interested in a certain Wiki project, and it would be nice to be able to track their edits somehow as they relate to the articles that belong to that Wiki project. Uh, because many Wiki projects have the problem that after a while, um, Many of those people are not active on the project anymore, and you just want to keep in contact with them, and it would be nice to actually track those things. Yeah. 
So for that problem, the best person to talk to is uh, Jonathan. I don't know where he is, if he's here. Yeah, so there are big problems in tracking uh, article affiliation to a Wii project, uh, uh, editor affiliation to a Wii project. So it's, it's, uh, it's a challenging problem to, to break this data at Wii project level. Uh, but yeah, I think Jonathan will be the best person to, uh, to help uh, give you a state of the, of the art of the problem. I hear that you talk, but I don't understand anything because the definition is much louder. Apologies. I actually have access to real time data um, on Wiki Project Room uh, but it's not currently been given the foundation. It's from the University of Washington. And we're trying to get it up and down. Okay, I volunteer at Wiki Project as a test case. <laughs> cool. Alright, nice. So, Tala, you had a question? Oh, okay. Okay, go for it. Is there any plan, like, for example, those agencies which are process or connected by a researcher like this one to be feedback to the media and to be released the central data? Yeah, so in fact, the, uh, uh, the Data Hub repository that uh, Dirk showed in the beginning is not restricted to data coming from the foundation. It's a general, it's a general purpose repository and we're trying to find ways to actually encourage researchers, community members to use it for sharing data. And, and we're working with the uh, uh, Open Knowledge Foundation uh, to try and see where we can customize it, what are the missing features. There's been, for example, for researchers, there's been a request uh, in the past to add the uh, DOIs, uh, basically ways of uh, referring to data sets in a way that makes them you know, canonically uh, citable uh, and also uh, measurable in terms of impact uh, for, for reuse. Uh, that's something that's not implemented yet, and it's something that, uh, if you think is, a, is an important use case, we'd, we'd like to hear. Can I say something on that? Mm -hmm. So, um, and I'm a really person that I think this. Uh, so there are tons of research, tons of data, valuable data sets on the uh, media project. Uh, and it's absolutely the research responsibility to make that data I think it's uh, our responsibility as a foundation to build at least the minimum incentives yes. that will actually make this happen. Because right now, I can tell you, yes, do it, but you're not going to do it. Because uh, what, what do you get as a researcher? What do you get as a community member, right? right. Well, we, we have, uh, if uh, the researcher asks for access to things that are not public, like deleted revisions or uh, things like that. No, none of that, none of that. No, no, uh, uh, but we, we have this kind of arrangement. Like, if, if a researcher wants to do research on that, then uh, we have thought about, we actually have draft policies on that, that they're then kind of required to publish their uh, findings in an open access journal. They're kind of required to put their data in an open access uh, repository, this kind of stuff. But this is draft policy, it has not been turned into actual policy. And uh, if you have any ideas on how we could get there, that would also be interesting. The foundation can be motivate people to release their data, like there is a in Brazil in the country's program, we're setting up what we're calling the data central, and it's just some pages on the internet where we are publishing a resume of our data, of our research that we are doing, and links for the, the raw data, and we are calling other researchers that are working with our data to publish their things there. So we have a central place where you can see everything that's being researched by now in Brazil with this data. So 
it's not our responsibility to feel that. But right? if we make a beautiful page with everything centralized, maybe that can help other people to go there and do their stuff too. So I saw a question about um, search, search data. And it's something actually, few of you know, but actually I, I tried it and, and, I, and, I, and I failed quite miserably at it. Um, search data, so we, we, we like the, the logs, right, what people search for is highly valuable, right? It, it can give us insight into what topics are not being covered on Wikipedia, right, for example. So we actually, um, we looked into publishing it and we published for a day. And even though we cleaned up quite a lot of private information, it is crazy how much stuff people <coughs> put in there that's highly private, which I was probably way too naive to realize that. Like passwords for other sites to log in, crazy stuff. So we had, to, we had to pull that. And so even though I totally agree with the person who asked the question, this is highly valuable data, it is entirely non-trivial to actually publish it in such a way that is safe. So I wish I, I wish there was an easy way to do this because we would I would love to do it, but I just have to probably be the messenger of bad news. I don't think this is going to ha happen, maybe ever, because it's just it's just too hard to do it in a, in a, in a safe way. Another question I saw and I will bet one to Dario was about the, about experimentation and the click tracking and how to reproduce it. And I know that Dario published a lot on stuff in the E3. Maybe you want to briefly mention that. Yeah, so to uh, quick note first on uh, what you said before. So, anonymized data, uh, aggregate data, how do we go about that? A few updates, like the service announcement. The first one is that, uh, uh, as you may have heard, uh, the foundation is revising uh, the privacy policy. We badly had to update uh, this policy that has never been updated since uh, the first time it was, uh, it was released, specific to address the need of uh, internal and partly external research. So. Uh, what do we do this, with this data? What can we, uh, what can we capture from our users uh, in a way that's respectful uh, of our uh, principles uh, in terms of privacy? And also, what do we do when we want to release this data, which may conflict with the fact that we're uh, collecting uh, some, some private data? So I think so. This is going to be announced uh, uh, within a couple of weeks. So there's going to be a public consultation. So I invite you to take a look at uh, the blog uh, of the foundation uh, for the announcement of the first draft. Um, what I've seen is that uh, uh, by participating in this process, uh, I've seen provisions for uh, the publication of uh, aggregate data sets. Anonymization is a much more complex problem, uh, complex problem uh, as either noted. Um, but there's also provision, uh, a set of provision for uh, researchers to work with the foundation under NDAs. So that's something we have like used uh, in, I mean, in a systematic way in the past, but I think it's an instrument. It is a, it's a it's tool that we, we should uh, uh, start expanding uh, in the future. So uh, keep, keep an eye, keep an eye on the announcement on the, on the blog for uh, for the privacy policy uh, Yeah, the second the second point uh, on uh, instrumentation. Uh, so I, I did a quick overview and we can see of the tools that we currently have available. Um, and so you can, uh, but I can share later in the slides uh, uh, with a summary of uh, what tools we're making available for researchers and committee members to uh, maybe not roll out uh, live experiments on uh, Wikipedia, which is extremely complicated for a number of reasons, but uh, <coughs> at the very least that you have to start uh, uh, developing tools that may be eventually informing live experiments. And in particular, we have uh, uh, the labs infrastructure. I'm sure most of you uh, heard about. How many of you know about uh, labs and lab tool labs? Yeah, okay. Um, and something that uh, was probably not broadly announced is that on top of the database replication, we also have now uh, provision for instrumentation available on, uh, on, tool, on, on labs. And what that means is that uh, it's going to be easier. I don't want to say uh, super easy, but it's going to be easier uh, to instrument the code of your tools, of your, uh, you know, anything that you run on tool labs you need to collect the behavioral data from uh, from participants uh, in, uh, in your experiments or users of these tools. So that's something that uh, you also may want to uh, uh, do. Um, we also have a set of uh, uh, yeah smaller piece of infrastructure for running live experiments, and I'd like to tell you more about uh, 
you know, uh, what we've done with uh, guiders, uh, what we've done with uh, account creation campaigns. Uh, some of you may have heard about the user metrics uh, API and the weak metric project that we presented uh, earlier. Uh, and if you're interested in knowing what it's about, uh, come and talk to me. So there's a lot of like a small, uh, I mean, progress uh, happening in different areas that may support uh, experimentation and then more integrated research. Uh, but we don't have yet like a, a full-fledged uh, uh, program and an approach to engage with researchers and actually running experiments uh, or you know collecting data in an effective way from other people. I don't have the e present anymore. I I I that. Any other burning questions? that looks in all the projects all together and makes, you know, maybe can give you a pattern how, you know, maybe of a role of a user. Maybe it's a global Wikimedia, maybe it's a Wikinome yeah. or a bundle fighter. So actually we have, we have a tool that's getting in that, that, that direction. Um, there you yes, know, yes. yesterday yes. about user metrics, the initial version. Okay. We have um, a follow-up version called Wikimetrics where you upload a cohort of users and right now you can query by single project the edit counts. Uh, to, uh, this has been a, also a, a feature request from the product team itself to get like, a global edit count for, across all projects. So uh, the tool itself is public, uh, it's open for public consumption. That particular feature is not yet implemented, but it's in my backlog and um, yeah. So the user API. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's not working. Okay, I think one more question and then we should wrap up. Any reason for I'm very early is on the feedback tool? Can you speak up? And the feedbacks uh, on our AFD you mean? Yeah. That's one scenario. Yeah, it's so <laughs> uh, uh, the short answer is that uh, so for textual feedback, so what we call article feedback files, if you, if you remember we had a previous version that was uh, <coughs> Uh, generating ratings. Uh, it was live on a number of projects uh, and it was replaced on uh, some projects with uh, AFD version 5, which is more about uh, actual uh, feedback. Um, it's actually not live anymore uh, on uh, uh, the entire uh, English Wikipedia or the entire German Wikipedia where it used to be uh, after a community vote uh, where uh, we decided to take it down uh, for a variety of reasons. And so we haven't we haven't quite uh, uh, figured out with the legal department uh, under what terms to release the corpus of existing and historical data that uh, we collected over about a year. Uh, but from now on, in English Wikipedia, this is an opt-in tool. So it's a just a, a very small sample of articles with a tool enabled. So if you're looking for an ongoing source of, of article feedback data from English Wikipedia, that doesn't exist. It's live on some smaller projects, and you may want to do that. Uh, other events right now to uh, your research. All right. Um, I think we should wrap up. I think it's 45 minutes. Um, if you have any more questions, please feel free to approach either me or Dario. We're here until late Sunday night uh, and always ready to talk about data. Um, so thanks so much for your participation on the Etherpad. Uh, actually, there was way more contribution than I expected. So thanks so much. I will definitely go through them uh, when I want to get back. Um, so, thank you.